Hi, welcome to another one of my video logs. In today's log, we'll be talking about how do you motivate students to achieve their goals. Learning guitar is a common pursuit and is a goal of many children. Most parents want the best for their children and having heard about the cognitive and other benefits that come uh, with learning an instrument, parents are happy to buy, the, uh, buy an instrument, pay for lessons, drive their child to lessons and sacrifice their time for the duration of their lessons, at least once a week. Unless the parents also help the child practice, this is about the uh, parents' uh, contribution. That's a, quite a significant contribution uh, to help the child achieve their goals. But what of the child's contribution to achieving their goals? Children are generally not held to account for their progress and most of them are not responsible enough to ensure that they put in a solid half hour a day to consolidate the pieces that they are working on. So teachers often give in to a child, they'll acquiesce, they'll water down a child's contribution. They'll tell them that 10 minutes a day is sufficient practice. If you teach a child at their school, you may find that uh, they'll often be late to lessons or you will have to retrieve them, retrieve them from their classroom. They will not have practiced, their music is in disarray, and sometimes they can't even remember the piece that they were working on. So how do you make children step up and become responsible for their own practice, for their own progress? Recently, I came across the true story of nine-year-old Lenny Gwither. This is an inspirational story about how he had a goal and how he, had the, uh, how he took the steps to achieve his goal. It resonates with my students because they're about the same age or some slightly older, some even much younger. It makes them realise that if they too could assume some responsibility, they, like Lenny, could achieve their goals. The story starts with Lenny's father, a war hero from World War I. He risked his life to save others. He was wounded and upon his return to Australia, farmed a property outside of Melbourne. It was during the depression, no one had any money and there was a 30% unemployment rate. Working the farm was how Lenny's father kept the family fed. One day Lenny's father broke his leg and he had to be taken to hospital. Realising the dire circumstances this placed the family in, Lenny took it upon himself to tether horses and to plough the fields so that the family would have enough to eat. Upon his release from hospital, Lenny's father was so pleased with what the boy had done, he asked him what he would like as a reward. Lenny had been following the progress of the construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge through newspaper articles and on the wireless. And he said that he would very much like to attend the opening of the bridge, which was to occur in 1932. Very few people had cars in those days, and Lenny's father didn't think that attending the opening ceremony was a possibility. It was 600 miles or a thousand kilometres to Sydney uh, from the farm outside of Melbourne. Lenny told his father that he would like to ride his horse, Ginger Mick, to Sydney. Bear in mind that these days a child of nine wouldn't be allowed to go down to the local shops by themselves. But anyway, Lenny packs a toothbrush, pyjamas, spare clothes, a water bottle and places them in a sack. And with great reluctance, his parents let nine-year-old Lenny Gwyther ride a thousand kilometres, uh, Gwyther, sorry, ride a thousand kilometres to Sydney. It's about this point that I asked my students if they could imagine riding a thousand kilometres on horseback to attend the opening of a bridge. There were no mobile phones or social media, and it's not just a matter of jumping on your horse and riding, but Lenny had to know how to read a map, how to find food, how to, uh, and shelter, he was responsible for making sure that his own horse was fed and had water. On the trip, they were accosted by a vagabond. They survived bushfires and endured cold and rain. They made the trip to Sydney for the opening and were welcomed by dignitaries. Even then, the feet of Lenny and Ginger Mick inspired a nation and helped lifted spirits from depression. After the opening, Lenny and Ginger Mick rode back to the farm. They covered over 2,000 kilometres and were away from the family for four months. My students enjoy the story and react positively to it. It helps them see that their goals can also be achieved by accepting responsibility for the steps 
for those goals, uh, uh, the steps necessary for those goals to become a reality. I told this story to my six-year-old student, Max, the other day. At the end of the lesson, he packed up his guitar and handed it to his mother for her to carry it to the car. I said, Max, would Lenny have given his mother his guitar to his mother so she could carry it for him? He looked at me, then he took the guitar back off his mother. For more logs and vlogs on teaching guitar to young children, please head to my website, www.copyplanelearn.com.